Hey, what's up everyone? Uh, Sam Carlson from SpawnRoom.com with another eSports Bulletin, episode 62, for September 6, 2012. The eSports Bulletin is a daily recap of all the news since the last episode, offering you the fastest way to get caught up with eSports, along with building an archive of eSports history. However, today might not be the fastest way to get caught up with eSports because this is a crazy long episode. I have been, like, AFK for like a week and two days or so anyway um or yeah since august 27th really i haven't been able to do much episodes or whatever so instead of making a massive or like multiple catch-up episodes i'm actually just mentioning all the headlines that happened between august 27th and september 5th and then continuing on with a full normal episode so yes i think that'll work fine um, also, like I said, this is going to be a really long episode, my apologies, um, but there's nothing I can do about that. Also, I am watching my parents' dog, because they're out of town, so if you hear any, like, barking or anything, if you hear any barking or anything, it's this doggy right here. Chloe, look right there. So, yes. Alright, well, let's get this started, because there is a ton of stuff, so... Starting with past headlines for August 27th through September 5th. Uh, we have some major tournaments that wrapped up, um, like the MLG Summer Championship, I-46 with the U.S. vs. European TF2 Showdown, um, the Steel Series CSGO Tournament, ESWC, the International 2, Red Bull Land Seattle, the Riot World Championship, North American Regional Qualifier, and I'm sure there was a ton of other stuff. So, uh, yes. It should also be noted that further developments were made in the Curse Dignitas disqualification due to collusion conflict at MLG, with video apologies being produced, statements being released from the organizations, and Dignitas fining their own team and for you know, uh, like ba ma uh, uh, making them pay for the trip to MLG and stuff. So that sucks because uh, Dignitas is from Europe, so that was probably quite a travel. Um, Kespa and the Esports Federation have reached an agreement ending the short conflict that arose between them and their players attending the OSL and GSL. There was a boycott, all that stuff. So that's all over and done with. Startail LOL, TSM Evil LOL, Team Infused TF2, Eclipsia Luna LOL, Western Wolves Call of Duty, It's Go Suhan, Isu Bakad, uh, WinFact, Counter-Strike, and the Infused Counter-Strike Source Female Squad have all been disbanded over this last week and a half. Holy crap. Um... Western, uh, on the other end, though, Western Wolves Halo and Trademark Esports Heroes of New Earth have reformed. Fnatic Quantic, Fnatic Quantic Gaming Infinity 7 and Flaming Rainbows have all picked up new players. Uh, Carl Forlen Lord Luckman formed a new League of Legends team, Alloblade, uh, and Virtus Pro added a Dota 2 ladies roster. Unsurprisingly, more teams have switched to Counter-Strike Global Offensive, like Four Kings, Old Boys, the former Beast team, Very Games, 3D Max, Blight, GLG, WinFact, and In Your Head. Um, along with new events at Ingo, like the Adroit Slan, ESL Major Series, the Copenhagen Games, and the Norwegian BLAN. Halo 4 has been confirmed for the MLG Fall Championship in Dallas, November 2nd through the 4th. Awesome! I personally am happy about that. I enjoy watching Halo. I'm sure there's a lot of other people that are... Glad to see it coming back. Steven Destiny Bonnell was released from Root Gaming after another controversial in issue regarding him and his penis. So, go read about that, because that's pretty funny. Um, although, I suppose it really sucks for him and stuff, but whatever. The Fnatic Play Cups have added Shoot Mania Storm. The Virtus Pro Premiership Tournament for Counter-Strike Global Offensive has been announced. The SWC French Qualifiers and Female CSGO Tournament were announced for the Paris Games Week. Uh, TSM has partnered with Razer, while Slayers and Evil Geniuses have dissolved their partnership. And lastly, StarCraft II, Heart, uh, Heart of the Swarm? Oh my god, I totally forgot. Heart of the Swarm beta went live for some individuals, lucky enough to be included. Shows how much I play StarCraft. Um, all these headlines and more available at spawnroom.com forward slash news, or I'm going to give a little bit of shout out to another RSS aggregator that I've personally used a whole bunch, and... Uh, it's a lot more fancy than mine, is esportspress.com. So you guys over there doing a great job. Go check it out if you haven't. Okay, so now this is the sep September 6th part of the episode, and we're going to start this, as always, with event news. The 2012 Global StarCraft Team League Season 3 kicks off tomorrow and will be the last season for this year. 
The team list, map pool, schedule, and format have all been released and are available in the video description below. Alright, heading on down to Chile, we have the Gamerland Challenge kicking off tomorrow for 32 CSGO teams. Brackets have been drawn and the tourney is ready to start. Uh, I'm not sure what kind of prize pool they have. I couldn't really find very many details about this tournament or even a website. Um, but in the attached link, it's a Kadred article, there was a pretty funny comment. It was a little bit racist, I guess, but uh, not in like a mean way. Just I don't know, It was pretty funny if you want to go read it. It's about the, the prize pool order. Uh, Sign-ups close tomorrow for the Return to Castle Wolfenstein Anniversary Cup 2012, a game that has a deep history and competitive FPS, but is rarely seen offering tournaments anymore. Uh, there doesn't appear to be a schedule written out, so I'd assume it kicks off um, probably like the day after the registration closes. Which, did I forget to write down? I think I forgot to write down. I think that closes tomorrow, so yeah. And then, yeah, like I said, I think the tournament would kick off right away. It should also be noted that veteran caster Warwitch will be covering the tournament, an old member of Team Sportscast Network, the same organization that once housed legendary esports figure DJ Wheat. Yay! ESL has announced the EPS CSGO Open Qualifiers, a series of three qualifying tournaments that will allow two teams uh, per to secure slots in the EPS main season event. This is a region specific tournament, so take note of that. And it's for countries surrounding Germany. It was like Germany, Switzerland, Liechtenstein, and Austria, or something. <laughs> you can read it in the link. Um, but the dates are September 9th, 16th, and the 23rd. The SGL has announced a preseason tournament for CSGO to help determine seeds for their main season. Registration appears to be open appears to be open and would assumingly close this Sunday when the tournament launches. Group stages will run until September 20th when the knockout stages begin. Lots of CSGO news as always. I'm almost getting sick of it. There's almost like too much. <sighs> a StarCraft 2 all-kill show match between North American Team Evil Geniuses and European Team Fnatic is scheduled for Sunday, September 9th at 12pm EDT. Following it on September 10th at the same time is a Dota 2 best of 5 show match between the two teams. Uh, all matches will be casted on Twitch t twitch.tv forward slash one more game TV. A three on three one day cup for enemy territory has been announced by No One Gaming for tomorrow, September 7th at 20 CET, which I believe is 20 or <laughs> 20, 2 p.m. Eastern, 1 p.m. Central. It should also be noted that registration appears to be full at this time, but there is a waiting list if you uh, for additional sign-ups, so maybe they had expanded, or if you know some teams can't make it or something, and your team can. Awesome. The SL Major Series Season 11, or Winter Season, is kicking off soon for 7 games and a 34,000 euro combined prize pool, 15,000 of which is going to World of Tanks, which seems a little crazy, um, especially for any American viewers, because they don't really play World of Tanks in the US, it seems like, so, um, but I do actually hear about, a lot about it, it just seems kind of weird that that's like, bam, that's like the highest prize pool, but whatever. Uh, people may also be happy to know that Counter-Strike Source has been replaced with Global Offensive and FIFA has been knocked up a notch from 12 to 13, um, but however, Heroes of New Earth has been removed entirely. Man, I need to eat something, I feel like I'm about to like, just pass out or something. Uh, Excello and Zowie Gear have launched another Call of Duty 4 challenge that is currently ongoing with the next set of matches scheduled for September 10th and the Grand Finals on the 12th. Uh, the prize pool is 5 mouse pads and it's winner takes all. Another Take TV tournament kicked off today, the Stim to Win tournament, Stim to the Win tournament, bringing 32 players, 24 of which are Terran, head to head for a thousand dollar first prize prize pool. I think the combined was like 1,800. Uh, so you can go check TakeTV.net for more information and a link to the stream, which should be up tomorrow or whatever. I was also requested in episode 52 to share more information about the Topanga A League for Capcom Super Street Fighter 4 Arcade Edition version 2012 taking place in Japan. Uh, I'm not really sure what they specifically wanted me to share, um, especially since I don't talk about results and standings due to not wanting to spoil stuff, and also because it takes forever. I mean, can you imagine if I did st results and standings? These episodes would be like... It would be the opposite of the fastest way to get caught up with esports, because, well... Um, so I'm not going to share standings, but I did find two good resources that share um, that do share the current standings, upcoming matches with links to the live streams, and a breakdown of the results 
um, and like notes about it and stuff like that. And uh, those were from Shuruken and Event Hub. So you can go, I've, they'll both be in the video description. So if you're interested in that, uh, you can go check that out. Um, it should, oh yeah, it also looks like the online portion of the tournament as, is completed as of September 2nd, with the next set of offline matches kicking off tomorrow, September 7th, and completely wrapping up Sunday, September 16th. Whew. Okay, player and team news. German team MTW have decided to drop support for Counter-Strike Source and pick up and take a wild guess. Global Offensive! Moving forward with this change, they will also be releasing Stefan Schraven Wagner and Philip Osiris Bash Kaxamarsigs? Uh, replacements have not yet been found. European gaming organization Epsilon Esports has announced the acquisition of Richard Shox Papillon and the formation of a new CSGO team. The full roster and player manager quotes and all that good good jazz can be found on the provided link. Moscow 5 has disbanded their Dota 2 team, but is working to immediately reform it by offering contracts to two of the former players. They were not mentioned which two they were selecting, but we can assume that announcement is coming very soon. Uh, Brazilian player Lincoln Phoenix Lau has announced his retirement from the CS scene, or Counter-Strike scene, after 10 years of active competition, leaving his latest team, Play Art, who have yet to announce a replacement. Which is interesting, because there seems like there's been a lot of Brazilian news lately. Must be blowing up down there. Team Infuse has announced another StarCraft II acquisition, this time with Canadian Protoss player Julia Iluge Childress, formerly of Czech 6. Infuse also announced the addition of a Shoot Mania team, acquiring three, uh, three players formerly of Unreal Tournament fame. Patrick sends Kylie, George Caspa Stevens, and Richard Bills McCarthy. Shin Killer Sang Ho, who yesterday announced his mutual departure from Complexity Gaming, has also revealed that he will be returning to Korea to quote, regain my skills rather than gain money. Uh, okay. Killer will hopefully be able to find a new team as he is beginning, or he is to begin competing in the Hot 6 GSL Season 4 Code A tournament very soon. So yeah, hopefully he can get picked up, because I'm sure that would kind of suck, you know. In episode 61, I mentioned WinFact acquiring League of Legends team Megashock, but it only came with four players, the solo top position missing. Today, they have announced the completion of their lineup by signing Swedish player Simon El Mapo Naslund. And lastly, for player and team news, VVV Gaming has acquired a Brazilian team, another Brazilian, uh, in Flexo Gaming, and will be entering that region's League of Legends scene as VVV Gaming Brazil, a part of the world. Oh yeah, <laughs> I already said that. <laughs> Apparently, I had already written out that part. Ah, anyway. Miscellaneous news. CyberGamer, an online tournament platform, has announced the addition of CSGO to their supported games list. Uh, this is great news for the FPS scene, especially for, for this new game coming out, or this new game that's out right now. Um, since CyberGamer has been known to offer really solid support to, you know, smaller scenes or whatever, uh, notably Call of Duty 4 over the last year or two. They've also announced an invite main and academy league, each offering different prize pools, and um, I think they were doing that thing where like if you're in the academy and you can move up to main and you can move up to invite and stuff like that so you can read all about it in the provided link there's also talk going around from last night's live on three that riot is asking pro teams to remain exclusive to their title league of legends a move which seems awfully demanding if it's true uh riot has responded to some degree denying this on reddit and their forum stating that is simply rumor however some like high level individuals in esports organizations have said otherwise so What's the truth? Um, I, I generally it seems like if something is said, it's not just totally made up. There is some sort of basis in truth, so I don't know. Anyway, I even heard previously that Sundance said something about Riot declaring LOL an exclusive title at MLG events, meaning that like Dota 2 could never be at an MLG event if League of Legends is there. Again, this could that could be rumor too, I'm not really sure. Uh, yeah, so now obviously since the, this is declared a, a rumor, but there isn't details about, they mentioned cross-play, um, but they don't really define what that means. So uh, in the Kadred article I was reading, they kind of implied that it was for hybrid players like Joshka, Nova, Marcus, who played like Han and Dota 2 at the same time. Or if it's like Evil Geniuses could not have a Dota 2 team and a League of Legends team. I feel like it would be that, but maybe it's both, I don't know. I guess it would be both, it's the latter. Uh, but either of which is kind of a, a big deal in my opinion because um, 
that would suck. I mean, that's kind of the cool thing about esports is you have like all these games going on. It would kind of suck if someone stepped in and said, no, there's only one MOBA game. There's only one FPS game. There's only one fighting game, especially FGC, right? Because like a lot of those players, they'll play, you know, Street Fighter Cross Tekken at one tournament. They'll go and play Ultimate Marvel versus Capcom 3 at another tournament and they'll go play whatever, you know. Um, so that seems like that would kind of upset that balance and ruin a lot of things. So hopefully it's not true. Either way, it should probably be addressed though, right? So think about it and, uh, you know, post in the comments what you think or just have an opinion about it. And then if someone brings it up, you can be like, Whoosh. no way, but dude, that's terrible. Okay, so anyway, moving on. In eSports progress news, ESFI World mentioned in, in an article that the Riot World Championship Season 2 Regional Finals for Taiwan, Hong Kong, and Macau, 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 whatever, in Taipei at G1 reportedly had 51,000 live attendees, which if accurate would set a new world record for eSports attendance. Um, of course, no one is talking about it. I couldn't really find any other, any other sources. Um, which is probably why no one's talking about it. But regardless, I felt it was worth mentioning, just, you know, just as an idea. You know, you don't... Lately, we've heard a lot more about Brazil but and Southeast Asia, but, you know, some North American fan or something might not have any idea that there's a serious esports interest in these other countries. So I just thought I'd throw it out there. And just to share another bit of intrigue from the folks over at ESFI, they released an article today detailing information about Korean versus non-Korean win rates for StarCraft II. Um, of the data they collected, they revealed that Koreans beat non-Koreans 74% of the time. So, interesting. Uh, if you like graphs and data like myself, go check it out. It's kind of cool to read. So, All right. Sorry for this incredibly long episode. Um, it's probably going to happen again because I'm going to be pretty busy next week too gotta work a real life job which really sucks i wish i could just do esports all the time but oh well um yeah so again sorry but before i close this out i want to give a shout out to team erox erox who contacted me via episode 60 asking me to let everyone know that they have just recently reformed are in the process of launching a brand new badass website and are producing live stream content on twitch tv so go check them out team erox team no space I shouldn't even say that. T E A M E R R O X. Two R's. Um, yeah. So yeah, to go check them out. Go follow them on Twitter. You can uh, you can find them on Twitter and Facebook by typing Team Erox and uh, you know where you normally put it after the slash. So uh, I need to eat something before I pass out. Thanks as always for watching the episode. Uh, stay tuned for future ones. They will be much shorter. I promise you. Um, yeah. I think that about covers it. Subscribe above, uh, Twitter, well, Twitter and Facebook, Spawn Room, and uh, yeah, see you next time.